imagination might not be as wild as uh, a lot of ours, but allowed to be, we could picture our own Grand Central Station or uh, Shadow uh, and Mysteries and yeah. But that has nothing to do with why you're here today. <laughs> I uh, just give you a peek on how I started it. In enjoying this world. And I know that, because you must wonder, how did you find him? Uh, because he is a very good friend and works with Larry Storch, who is a very good friend of mine that I love intensely. And, and Matt is so great with Larry. And he has to come and help me. I'll go with Larry tomorrow in New York City if any of you make your way up there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you played Larry's girlfriend on that trip. I was his girlfriend on that trip. Oh. And as he says often, which Matt just told me wasn't true, <laughs> that, that I was the only girlfriend he ever had in his career. And so I felt very special about that until this morning. <laughs> well, listen, Larry did an episode of the Alfred Hitchcock Hour, and he had a girlfriend on that show. But the good thing is, is he killed her and he didn't kill you on F Troop. So. Well, oh, that's something to smile about. Uh, the happy days are here again. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, anyway. Um, well, so growing up in LA, did you, you, you were talking about radio. What about movies and things like that? Were you big on well, the movies? And I was a youngster during World War II and was a member of the Junior Army in Los Angeles. And we had a little card, and we collected newspaper and bacon grease and things like that. It was our job during the war, old tin pans and things like that. And we got to go to free movies downtown Los Angeles and take the streetcar and go to these great movie houses, which are now malls or something like that. But uh, we could see the Sonia Henny movies and the the musicals, and being sort of a, a lone person in my youth, I used to fantasize that I was Jeanette McDonald or uh, Catherine Grayson, who was a young up-and-comer, but I loved Jeanette, and of course, Nelson was in my dreams that I didn't even know what I was dreaming about, but I loved him. And so I would it be walking down the streets or walking through the tunnel, going to see my grandparents, singing with great abandon. You know, um, Jeanette McDonald's song. And sing, 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 sing. And uh, just having a great time being there. And so I don't think in my real life I ever thought I really had a chance to even get closely what they did, but uh, accidentally, every, everything that happens, almost I think to everybody, happens because if this didn't happen, you never would have done that. And so there's all these bizarre turning points that lead you to, to help a river. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Like silicone, oh, well, we're thinking about it, well, we get support. Then we'll check around that stage. I'll show you what we're working with later. Alright, nice. Blue. You want to come up and look at this? You can. Blue. I'm going to get a close look. You don't have to sit there. And usually, you don't want to chase the material around. You just want to pour it in the most spot and find any legs. Well, uh, so you don't get too many of your bones. The other enemy of good casting is impatience. You guys are apple. Do not be impatient. Oh, I like that. Look how sparkly that is. I love it. Alright. We pay for that material, so we're going to scrape it all in. So we pay for that material, we'll make it. We'll just scrape it all in there, and so we're going to pay for that material, so we'll scrape it all in. Alright, so we've seen the urethane. 
when we do prosthetics work, we're probably going to use silicone. This is some silicone that overflowed from this guy, which is an encapsulated silicone prosthetic we'll take a look at later. Um, Ecoflex pointing knife in there. So here, pass that around. It's what you use for flesh stuff. They think. Now there's a version of that that we're going to use 35, it's a little stiffer, the beauty of 35 is it's a two and a half minute pot life and then about a five minute demol time, so we're going to crank some stuff out and make some glittery stuff. I think I might put a slacker in a lot of stuff. Yeah. I really want to feel like this in. Oh yeah, you can modify silicones, so you can add some slackers on it. It adds, okay, so in, uh, so I like making this kind of stuff. Yeah. So when I, um, it's not quite, it's too rigid. I really want to soften up and almost like jello we You add some slack. You can even do equal parts or less than equal parts. You can do one part A, one part B, and one part slacker. It gives you that nice, skinny, skin, skin feel. And I mean, catch my fist out of it. So it's um, slacker with dead. It's getting more of a skin feel. So if you feel like it's a 35 or a 20, it's real good. Yeah. So the slacker is softened up. Yeah, it does. It does soften. It's called deadening the feel. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's yeah, it's softer. Yeah. yeah. Does it make it any easier to apply colors to the silicone? Not particularly. Not no, because silicone. When you pour silicone, wherever you when you stir the color in it, wherever that silicone rolls, it rolls. That's how we always put the liquid in it. That's the liquid color. Mm -hmm. um, you just have to be a little bit creative. I paint during. And I paint after uh, airbrush silicone on top of it to give it a bit more three dimensional effect. But it's very tedious, but it works. Then, if the uh, torso, you often see this in the Egyptian mummies, if the torso went concave in any way, they would stuff that with soil and grasses and sometimes hair to keep the shape of the torso. Um, then, at that point, uh, the body is just covered in sort of a white paste. Uh, a face mask is designed and it's dropped down on top of the skull, but then the actual flayed skin off of the face is put on top of that mask and the hair is reattached as well. Um, and then uh, the entire body is painted black. So just to give you an idea, uh, I'm going to show you these. So here's some examples that we see from the monitor. Um, does anybody see anything in particular there? <laughs> this is kind of what they all look like. Yeah. Uh, the other really interesting thing about the Altacombo mummies is that everybody's under the age of 12. There are no adult mummies. So they are exclusively children. Um, in fact, there have been no adult bodies found. The Atacama or the Tuatara people. So there's a big question of what. So any child who died was mummified. Uh, there is, are no human remains of any kind of anybody that had hit puberty and above. Are these sacrifices? No. These are these are natural deaths. Really? And so the big question is what happens to the adult? This is my favorite theory. Uh, this is one of my favorite theories is that since, I mean it's really unusual uh, not to have any human remains, particularly when you've got and again, I'll, uh, these, these children were found in the homes. So if you don't find them in crypts, you find them sitting upright in houses. So if you find the Altacama or Tintara home, you're gonna find, uh, if they had children that passed or generations of children that passed, you're gonna find all the kids sort of propped up along the walls uh, and hanging out in the living room. Um, but no adults anywhere. So they, you know, I'm guessing that they were just sent to the water. And there is a huge population of saltwater crocodiles off the coast, so to me that's kind of groovy. You know, give them to, give them to the crocodiles because, hey, they take care of them. Uh, this is a photographer trying to shoot the crocodiles in that area. She's braver than I am. 